Okay. Drew doesn't know I'm starting this, but I'm impatient, so excuse my voice. We've been sick with, um, <laughs> now we know that it's, um, bacterial infection that we have. Anyways, so, um, to start this, I guess we should just start by saying that, um, we got a JZX90. Um, we imported it from Japan. We worked with a company in Maryland. They imported it here, uh, well not here, but close to Seattle. And now we, we have it. We got it and we love it. Um, here she is. As you can see, we have it a little bit open. We got it taken apart. And that is because um, we took it for a little drive and the radiator blew up. <laughs> so, um, we were parked, we went to go drive it back home from Mount Hood, about an hour and a half, and we got not even five minutes into the drive, and everything was overheating, uh, and then we had to get towed the hour and a half home. Um, it didn't end up being too expensive, but just annoying, and now my beautiful car is down until we can get it fixed. Currently, this is what we're working with. Um, so the car is a 1993 Toyota JZX90, uh, Grande, um, which this specific model came in an automatic. Um, cheaper that way, easier to get it. It being right-hand drive, it made it more convenient for us, um, just was the fit for us. With it being an automatic, changing out the radiator to something that wasn't stock, which we did, we also needed to get um, a transmission oil cooler and um, I needed a new fan because the radiator and the, the old fan don't fit. So, um, right now we got, we're working with, uh, Moshimoto radiator, brand new one. Um, this is the stock fan shroud. Um, but the stock fan shroud obviously doesn't fit. Um, it doesn't line up. Nothing, nothing fits. So instead of getting a new radiator, I figured, oh, excuse me, sir. Um, instead of getting a new radiator, like a different one, uh, I just decided that I was going to do an entire cooler cooling system overhaul, um, and that be the start to this build. Uh, so in here we have the old radiator. It is busted and dusted. There's lots of trash in there, um, so excuse that, but I can kind of show how messed up it was. Um... So there's the damaged fins. So it was, I don't even know how we drove it as far as we did. Um, it is awful. We got all new um, stainless steel hoses. I cleaned up the engine bay. This was much greasier, much dirtier. Um, so I cleaned it up, decided to ditch the cover because I hate it. The battery died and also figured disconnect it. We're gonna charge it somewhere else. So um, next plane of attack, Got the radiator in. It's not fully mounted um, because the mounting brackets that go on here, um, they kind of mount on like this, but there's no hole there. Um, so for the old radiator, it will not go over this unless I drilled into this. So I figured I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna get new mounting brackets um, and we'll just hope for the best. If not, I'll just like machine something together, work something together, whatever. Thankfully, a lot of this stuff was on sale for Prime Day, um, so I was able to get a new fan shroud with new 12-inch fans. This was just like some random fan company on uh, Amazon. My thoughts were I paid about as much for the fans and the shroud as I would have paid for a name brand shroud, so I figured um, I'm not really going for like high performance yet. I haven't, it's a stock engine. Everything's stock, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run these fans until I have a reason to change out the fans, and then I'm gonna just change it to some uh, Moshimoto Slim 12-inch fans, um, and then take it from there. But right now, I have so many um, high, high performance cooling upgrades at this moment, so the shroud itself is the upgrade with this one. The fans are just, um, extra but this will be nice to have so that way um, it will always run cooler and the transmission can work a little less and hopefully last a little longer that's where we're starting um, i obviously already took the old radiator out that was a pain but now here we are um, the next bit probably going to be either installing the fan and going from there or 
showing the fan installed. Uh, hopefully we can do some time lapses, but we're sick, so honestly, I might just be coughing the whole time, so. Um, the important thing is, after this comes suspension, wheels, body kit, so I'm excited to be done with this so we can move on to something uh, that isn't just under the hood and hidden. <laughs> Wah, wah, wah. At this point, um, we got the old fan out, and now we've got some aluminum sheeting that we got from Home Depot, and we've measured out where the radiator is and the allowances that I want to have for myself uh, in order to be able to attach the shroud to the radiator with a little extra allowance that I would need just to be on the safe side. We're working with only one fan now instead of two like I thought. And so here I've already started cutting out some pilot holes to cut out this. Um, I'm going to finish cutting or drilling these pilot holes. And then after that we're going to cut out the outside of this masking tape. Uh, my hope with the masking tape is that A, it allows me to keep my line a little bit better. And then B, it will allow me to avoid metal shavings as much as possible. So hopefully the metal shavings can adhere to the masking tape instead of just flying everywhere. This, this sheet was like 25 bucks at Home Depot and a new fan shroud that's literally just this. Basically the exact same thing. Was $80 <laughs> and it came with a kit of... It's so funny. So dramatic. It came with a kit of a bended box made of aluminum sheeting and then an aluminum ring and it was probably the equivalent of this one sheet. So um, this just goes to show that you can do it yourself. And um, Well, we haven't completed it yet, so I guess we'll wait until we've completed well, it, and then we'll say you can if, do it if yourself. It's, if it's bad, it is not because you can't do it. It's because <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> so um, I'm going to finish drilling these pilot holes, and then um, we'll get some footage of that along with cutting out the rest of it. Start cutting, cutting stuff. So. And we almost forgot to record this part because um, our ADHD brains, we were like, oh yeah, drill the pilot holes, and then we just immediately went into cutting it. So um, I'm just eager. I'm I, I thankfully remembered because I'm the professional videographer, you know? Yeah. And, uh, uh, so, anyways, <laughs> yeah, we cut. already cut one side, now I'm going to work on the other side, and then we're going to rotate it, reclamp it, and then cut the two other sides. Obviously, uh, we still need a, a sawhorse, so... Um, yeah, I can't, I gotta say, this probably is not the safest way to do this, so I... I mean, I think we can't, we couldn't do this with a sawhorse in the same way. I still can't recommend this support. to the viewers, though. Yeah, that this I is think, the best way to do this because it is definitely not. But we're making it work. You know, there's always a better way to do it. Don't do it my way. <laughs> I'm just showing you what I did. And I'm not really able to get any footage of her cutting this because, as you can see, I do not have any safety gear. Whereas Al does have to. all the safety gear. So stand over there. No, I'm not. I'm not doing that. I'd rather just. You're too scared. I am. I, I would do it. I'd prefer to not go to the hospital tonight. So do it for the two. Yeah. So with that being the case, um, I'm just gonna let Al keep cutting, and we will show you when it's done. I think he's ready for yeah, you to go back inside and for me to start cutting again. That's fair. All right. So Al knew that I was hungry, and so um, she just kind of went gung ho and did. Not like everything, but like almost everything. As you can see, finished cutting around all the edges. Um, and then she also cut out these corners because what we're doing is basically like... I don't know if she's described this already, what her plan is, but... Basically she's going to fold this like onto the back of the radiator and then screw it in. So um, I know that doesn't really make much sense now, but once we actually get it done it'll make sense. Either way, I didn't want to skip why this is cut out. I think that's all we're doing for today because she's going to make dinner and I guess we'll pick it back up again soon. Alright, so some stuff has happened since uh, we recorded that. I 
was working out in the garage and I realized that there was still a hose connected to the engine from the radi the old radiator. And I got all new um, stainless steel hoses, so I had to get that hose off. Well, <laughs> it took me about two hours to get the hose off. And it was all because the clamp wouldn't come off. And I even used like a multi-tool to try to cut the clamp off. And that just seemed to make it tighter, which was awful. So I don't recommend ever doing that. I didn't want the pliers because like regular pliers do the job just fine. But I eventually got it off with just blood, sweat, and tears. I am now covered in grease just to get off one clamp. So it looks like I did way more than I actually did. Um, covered and stuff just from getting a clamp off. So I feel like I really did something today. So now all the clamps are off. This was, I don't know if you can see that, uh, right here, I'm touching right here. Uh, that was where the clamp was. Um, so that was the second hose going to the engine and everything else. So now we're all cleared out, no fan. Hopefully I'll actually get a clip of me doing some stuff for you instead of just explaining what I just did. <laughs> oh God, Drew's gonna have a really good time editing this. I just keep rambling. So um, I'm just gonna do the thing and hope for the best. Okay, so this is turning into like the longest project ever, but um, it's a new day. Drew is home today. Honestly, he's probably just gonna be hanging out. He likes to let me do things myself. There's Orion. Um, so yeah, today we're hopefully getting this done. Um, so we've got the fan connected to the radiator. Um, and right now I'm just installing the transmission cooler since my car is an automatic. Um, the old radiator came with a transmission cooler in, in it already. Um, so now I have to do a new transmission cooler, which is fine. Um, but I ran into a problem where it has these tie rods, basically, is what they are. Um, and they have these little plastic connectors that go over them, but these plastic connectors don't cinch down. So I am now having to figure out a way to get these to stay on there um, because it just like slides freely on and off. Like it's supposed to cinch down like a zip tie to hold it in place. So um, what I've kind of come up with, at least for a temporary solution, is we've got some zip ties here. So, I mean, zip ties, you know, fix everything. So I'm just gonna zip tie it on the end. So hopefully that'll hold that on there and we won't have to worry about it for a while. Or hopefully by the time we do have to worry about it, we're gonna be switching the car over to a manual anyways. So it's just recording because my hands are really dirty. Um, <laughs> So we got the radiator in here. Um, these are not the permanent mounts. These are just so I can get something in place, but you know, zip ties work. So um, like I said, we got the transmission cooler installed with the zip tie attachments. We had to get a little bit smaller zip ties um, from upstairs, but now that is attached, not hooked up yet, but it's attached, important. Um, so now we got the radiator in, we got the hoses connected to the engine. So we got the bottom hose here. We, we also switched out the thermostat that was in there. I'm saying we, but I did all of this. Just saying. It was all me. I was going to say, do not give me any credit. <laughs> it helped me with the the hose clamps. I, um, handed, I handed you the tools you needed, and that was pretty much all I did. <laughs> and got yelled at. And got yelled at, but I get um, it. So we got some stainless steel tubes um, to hopefully last longer than the old ones. And um, we got some tube clamps that I'm hoping are really good. Um... Some people said that they weren't very good, but, uh, you know, I think it's just, honestly, people not knowing how to install them correctly um, and not following instructions. So um, they got some reducers on there, and we got some uh, Mishimoto hose clamps. I keep saying Moshimoto. I don't know what I'm saying. I know it's Mishimoto, but, but yeah, now we have, <laughs> we have a Mishimoto thermostat, Mishimoto hose clamps, and Mishimoto radiator cap, uh, and a Koyo radiator. <laughs> Mishimoto so. should just sponsor you at this point. Oh, and I'm also getting uh, Mishimoto lug nuts when I get my wheels. We so. also, we, we got to tell you about the, the little joke we had. She, she replaced the, the temperature uh, gauge, like she said, right? The thermostat. Thermostat. I don't know why I said temperature gauge. Thermostat. <clears throat> I'm holding and that. it was with the, uh, with the um, Mishimoto one. 
And so we made the joke that like when this car is fully built and everything and everything's all replaced and like it's clearly like badass and has a bunch of aftermarket parts, when she goes to shows and stuff and has the build list, on the build list she should just have... What? You look at the car every like two seconds. Okay. Why does that matter? It's just distracting. (laughs) I just, I guess want to make fun of it. I was going to say you do the same thing, but anyways. um, So uh, we said that when we do the build list, when she does the build list, she's going to say... Um, you know, Mishimoto thermostat, and that's going to be the only thing that uh, is on the build list. So, yeah, I'm looking at the car to think about what I'm going to say, okay? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> now that I've made fun of Drew, um, we have our temperature sensor um, that we need to install onto the radiator. Um, we had some fun figuring out where that was on the engine. Didn't find it. Then found out. Doesn't need to be found. Um, we can just... Koyo um, has this really cool thing where they actually have a place for the temperature sensor right here. So um, I'm just going to be installing it there and running the wires from the fan to there um, because the stock one is for a hydro fan. Um, We're not running a hydro fan anymore. We're running the electric fan. So um, the one that came with the engine is just going to be going, but it's not going to be doing anything, uh, which is fine. So now this one's going to be running the fans um, for our electric fans running to the battery and all that. So um, the issue is there's two threads on this. Wonderful, beautiful threads. Uh, This thread is too big. This thread has the wrong pitch count. So um, we're going to see what we can find to fix that. I'm not hopeful that we're going to find the exact same thread size and count. um, Or like bolt size and count, thread count. So um, honestly, might be winging it. Might have to order it, but we're gonna give it a shot. Um, and then we also need an adapter for this one as well, which isn't as important because I can order this for like two bucks, but I wanna try to get it on today. Okay, okay. I- I'm springing a-, a quick bathroom update while you wash your hands in here. <laughs> okay, my hands are clean, my nails are gross, and my hands are peeling. Oh, that's really bad. <laughs> that's not fun. Um, so we went to O'Reilly. We originally said we were going to go to Wilco, I think, but and we then did that not. Was, I realized that was stupid because, yeah. uh, they're not going to have an adapter that does same size wrong thread to right thread. We're just going to have to get a new sensor, um, which isn't a problem. It's just kind of annoying because, um, each one is threaded just a little differently. So we're going to have to find the thread that fits a 1JZ or a 2JZ, um, and of course, nobody, not everyone has a 1JZ or a 2JZ just laying around, so we have to, um, we have to find, mm. my buddy, we just got home, so they're going crazy. Yeah, but, dogs, um, dogs are energetic. We're going to have to um, order one online, which is fine, it just means we can't get stuff done today, so yet again, we're going to do an update another day, probably going to be wearing the exact same shirt, because, um, yeah. These, we have like a million of these shirts for this. Yeah, Not sponsored, I, but we love the other paint, just saying. I do think that at this point we should probably end this video and have the the rest of it. Oh, I guess since I'm the one talking, I should probably point it towards myself. Since this video is now probably fairly long, I think probably should do the rest of it in a, in a second part. So. so if you're going to import a car from Japan and they don't make the engine that's going to be in your car in the U.S., Make a plan for getting the parts before your car gets there because it is more than likely there's going to be little things that you're going to need to fix, radiator, cool, like all that kind of stuff. Find maintenance parts in the U.S. Um, order one of everything just to have it on hand. Um, Mishimoto makes some great stuff, obviously. Fitment has some stuff. There's so many companies that have things that fit import cars. But figure out what works, what doesn't. Talk to importers, talk to these companies, message them. Please do the homework and do not make the same mistake I did. <laughs> Hindsight is twenty twenty. If I could go back and do it over again, I would have made a plan for all of these little parts that are basic maintenance parts. Yeah, make a plan. Think, make a plan, please. I was going to say, I think main thing that, that I would say... <laughs> yeah, main thing I would say is that, like, you know, both of us, we are somewhat knowledgeable in cars. But I think doing this process is kind of teaching us that, like, in order to work on a car that was not sold in the U.S., you got to know a lot about cars, and it's it's hard to learn. I think you know, we we both situation. know enough 
like you know enough about like cars coming with what and I know enough about like the basic fundamentals of cars and how they operate um, to be able to get it get it through it but from what I've watched from like other YouTubers and stuff, I think I've learned that I busted the main so thing, many of my knuckles. The, the main thing with like engines and stuff like this is <coughs> like I think to like Adam LZ and Jimmy Oaks and stuff, like they do a lot of custom fabrication mm -hmm. and we do not have the tools nor the space or anything to oh. do like you know, quick custom, like really good fabrication. Like you did have to do some for this and it did turn out good. But I'm it also took a good long time. at fabricating, though. It I, took a long time, and like you know, it, it's just not. Yeah. I'm done. I'm gonna shower, get all this grease off me, and uh, read a book or something. <laughs> not work on a car <laughs> for right now. Um, so, hope you enjoyed. Come back for the next video to see how this ends. Uh, and I don't know. I don't want to do peace because that's your thing. Uh, <laughs> this is booga, for booga, booga. our channel. So. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> like and subscribe or else.